What's good? What's good? What's good, you two? <laughs> Y'all like my Baltimore accent. Do you two do blue? But anyway, <laughs> enough of that. Um, we here to talk about Zatima. Episodes 5 and 6. Okay? Let's get to it. So, episode 5 opens up with Zach actually meeting up and showing the house next door that he wanted to um rent out. And it's a young lady. Um, The character's name is Deja. But she's actually... I know I've seen her on social media. She's not somebody I follow regularly or whatever. But I think her name Jazz or something like that in real life. And she does, like, she used to do the skit with, like, the the ghetto girl with the gold teeth. Like, to me, when she dressed up and did this skit, she was giving very much um, Holly Berry as Niecy on um, Baps vibes. That's what she looked like. She looked like Baps when she do it. And I think the most recent thing I've heard about her is um she went on Shan Bodie's um YouTube did an interview and she mentioned some things about the uh, um the relationship dynamics that she has with uh cuz I think she's dating Cam Newton the football player. I think that's who she's dating now. And um she was on there talking and people was making a big deal about uh she was in the blogs about Something she mentioned about their uh, relationship dynamics or whatever. Um, if y'all know more information about that, y'all can put that in the comments. We can talk about it. But anyway, she's playing a character named Deja. She was um, viewing the house because she was looking to rent it. She was flirting a lot with Zach or whatever. And at first, he wasn't catching on, but he caught on. He flirted back a little bit. But then um, he won he went on and took her application and all that kind of stuff like that. And went to um, walk her out. When he went to walk her out, his two homeboys was out there. And one of them was blocking her in so she couldn't back out of the driveway or whatever. So, uh, of course, they being silly and saying whatever they saying, looking at her and all those things like that. She leaves. The two homeboys, the married one, his name is Nate. He's also the homeboy that does too much, says too much. Um, I don't like his character. The other homeboy name is Tony. Tony is the more level-headed one, I guess. Um, anyway, they discuss her, and of course they make passes at her, and all that kind of stuff. And it's crazy that the Nate one is doing this when he got a whole wife and kids at home. But um, they they um, over there. They talking to Zach, and then they mentioned Zach brother, and I'm like, oh, so he has a brother. So we're gonna get more depth into these characters or whatever, right? So they mentioned. I think it was the friend Tony mentioned the brother, and was like, do he know that you got this house came to this money? He said, no, I'm a, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna contact them and let them know eventually. But right now, I'm chilling. So, um, this is their first time pulling up to the house and seeing the house. And they go in while Zach takes a phone call outside. And I believe he was talking to Fatima. She was saying that she, um, she needed, yeah, it was Fatima he was talking to. She was looking super sad, right? And she was saying, um, and he can hear it in her voice that she said she was sad or something was going on. And she kept telling him, like, I'll talk to you when I get home. When I get home, I'm going to tell you everything. And me, because I just watched Sisters yesterday, um, the new season opener, I was, um, it took me back to the whole paternity and the children thing. So I was like, wait a minute. So did she get the, um, is she sad? Because I totally forgot all about what happened in the previous episodes of this show. I'm thinking she's sad and looking like that because, um, like I said, the paternity results came back for the stripper's baby. And um, that he was actually the father because she said it was only going to take 36 hours at her job, remember? So, um, she like, I'm going to talk to you when I get home. So, he they hang up. And he goes inside the house and... 
the, the friend didn't do too much. Nate was all upstairs. Like, he done went through the whole freaking house, all in his stuff. Talking about, and you got a jacuzzi and this and that, and so forth. So, they doing too much. They want to tour. Um, they already gave themselves a tour. They want to get in the jacuzzi. So, he said he gonna, they going to get in the jacuzzi. So, the other friend, Tony, was like, all right, I'm going to go get us some beers. And first, Zach was trying to get them to leave. And then he just let them go ahead and st stay. He just acquiesced and let them stay. So, the other friend, Tony, goes to get the beer. Um... In the meantime, we go back to Fatima. She's in the parking garage. Angela comes out. And Angela is hanging up with Bryce. And they telling each other they love each other. So Fatima taking her back like, wait. Y'all already telling each other y'all love each other and everything? So Angela was like, yeah, girl. It's, it When it's real, it's real or whatever. I'm thinking like, dang, that was fast. Because um, it's only been, what? two, three weeks or so, or whatever, so I'm like, mm, okay, whatever, so Fatima tells uh, Angela, you know, about Ian, the ex, you know, what he came to the job for, he came to tell her that he got cancer, and he's dying, Um, and he asked to meet her and talk to her, and um, she thinking about doing it, so Angela is like, uh, you sure that you can handle that emotionally, you know, you already look like emotionally uh out of it like Fatima already looked like she got a range of things going on feelings and stuff like that so and to like you sure you sure you want to meet up with him you sure you can handle it you know and so Fatima was like yeah girl I got this I'm good so we see um Zach back at home with the boys hanging I mean hanging out with uh Nate talking or whatever they had the jacuzzi and stuff. Then we see Fatima actually sitting down in a coffee shop. That's it's a coffee shop that's at the bottom of the building that they work at. Apparently, she's there at the coffee shop. They're sitting at a table talking. Her and Ian. They're sitting across from each other. And the reason I'm saying this like this is because of something that's going to happen down the line. So they're sitting across from each other. So he's um she, he's telling her, like, yeah, you know, I effed up in the past with you. You was the right woman, wrong time. Um, And I got with that girl because her peoples had money. So I went back to her and went back to that because they had money. And I was I was dumb. Or whatever, but I really loved you. I never stopped loving you. And I just felt like I needed to tell you that. And apologize for how I handled things, how I treated you and stuff like that. So Fatima was like, thanks, you know. Basically, she reiterates the uh, cause he ain't go into detail. So she goes into detail about the shit that he did. So she got pregnant by him. He convinced her to get an abortion. And I'm wondering if it was the same day that she got the abortion. That he came to her and told her it was over and he was marrying the other girl. That's a lot to do to somebody. It's one thing, like, especially if you think you in love with somebody and y'all create a child. Whether it was uh, planned or not. You create a child out of y'all love or lust for one another. And they convince you to get an abortion. And that is not something that you was thinking about doing. And you was thinking like, especially if you was thinking like, we're going to be together so I can have this baby. We can raise this baby together. And they convince you to get an abortion. And the same day you get the abortion, they telling you it's over and they marrying somebody else. That's a lot. That's emotional damage that he did to her. Like, not just damage, that's like an emotional banking. You know what I mean? Like a, That's just, that's terrible. That's terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. But anyway, he was like, yeah, he copped to it. He was like, yeah, I was dead wrong for doing that. Um, And I'm, and I'm really, really, really sorry. And um, she, she said, you know what? I didn't realize how much I needed to hear that. Because that can somehow help me 
to do better in my current relationship because she got all this, and that's where all her anger, the hardness, and the hostility is built up because of what she dealt with with this guy. And she was bringing that luggage into this relationship was that or whatever, right? She like, you know, basically like that. I didn't realize I needed that apology and for you to admit what you did or whatever. So thanks. That's going to help me, you know, get rid of some of those feelings and do better in my current situation. So he goes on to say, you know, you know, I'm my, my mom's only child. my I mean, only son. And that um, I want you to call her. She asked about you. And she wanted to make sure that I told you what was going on. And apparently his mom and Fatima were really close. They liked each other and stuff. So he gets up from the table and he gets down on his knee. Asking her, like, please, please call my mom. Because when I'm gone, I want to know that she still got somebody in this world. Like, please take care of my mom. Like, have a relationship with her still, you know, especially to help her get past and get over me not being here anymore. The whole, well, not the whole time, but at this point, we see Tony, the homeboy outside the coffee shop walking past, and he looked and he recognized Fatima from pictures that they saw at the apartment, I mean, at the house, and he looked like, what? So, Ian gets up off his knees, and Fatima, like, I think about um, calling your mom or whatever. And he, like, please call her. And he said, just do, do me this solid or whatever. So, they get ready to go, and she gives him a hug. And she's giving him a hug. The camera pans over. We see Tony actually taking picture or video or something of Fatima and in hugging. So then we get back to the house. Like I said, Nate and Zach chilling. Nate is, I mean, yeah, Nate is actually in the hot tub. Zach is sitting off the side with his um, pants legs rolled up L.O. Cool J style with his feet in the hot tub. And that's when um, Tony walks in. So they get the chit chatting and all that stuff. And at the time, they was actually talking about Fatima. And Zach goes in the house for some reason. And while Zach is in the house, I know why. The realtor lady, she comes by. And she talks to him about Deja and her application. All that stuff like that. And while they having their conversation, Tony is outside showing Nate. And, like, we got to help him. Like, he don't need to let her move in. Because they was already saying, like, it's too soon. Don't let her move in and all that. Whole time, Fatima already lived there. They, like, uh, Tony, like, look what I saw now. Yo, like, I can't believe this. And, um, uh, Nate, of course, Mr. Do Too Much. I knew it was such and such. She a hoe and this and that and so forth. We got to help our boy. We got to save our boy. So, Tony, like, all right, let me handle it. Because, basically, he know Nate do too much. So, Zach finished having the conversation with uh, the realtor. She leaves. He comes back outside to the guys. No, they come inside. They talking. And um, that's when Fatima walks in. She like, hey, and all that. She speak to them. And, um, they, I'm wrong. They were still outside. Uh, the, the realtor leaves, Fatima comes in. Her and Zach hug and kiss and speak and all that kind of stuff like that. The guys come in and they looking dumb and to, um, Nate is doing too much and not keeping it. To a bare minimum, he's saying all kinds of stuff, throwing shade at Fatima as she's standing there. So she like, oh well, nice to meet y'all. And they, um, she said, I'ma just go lay down. And um, they was, um, she was telling Zach like, you could go hang out with them, go hang with your boys or whatever. And he like, no, I'ma stay here with you. You look like something wrong. I'ma stay here with you, help take care of you, or whatever. Figure out what's going on. You said you need to talk to me. And he, she was like, no, go ahead, go with your boys, go with your boys. Or whatever. So she goes there. She go lay down. 
She said she's going to go lay down. And um, that's when he look at them and Nate saying all kind of slick shit. And then that's when he like, Tony, just show him. Just tell him. Just show him. So Tony pull out the phone and like, look. And he put it in front of his head face. And it's actually just the picture of Fatima hugging Ian. You can see Zach get emotional. He tell them to leave. He got it. Tony, I mean, Nate doing too much. No, yo, we're going to handle this. And I'm like, what are you going to handle? This is a woman. A woman that this man loved. You see he emotional about it. You don't have no context as to what that was or whatever. So, let him handle it. Like, you doing way too much. Nate bitch made. That's all I can say. He bitch made. So, they like, come on, go with us to this party or whatever. That party that they was talking about in the last episode. So, um, Tony gives Nate his clothes and tell him, man, bro, take your clothes and go get in the car and wait. We about to go to this party. And Nate tells Zach, you know, bro, I got you. I love you. Like, I'm just acting like this because I don't want to see you hurt. He like, all right, just go. So he said, Tony, tell me the truth. What all did you see? Tony like, well, I can't. I went to the bar. When I came out, I saw her in the restaurant, and I said, oh, she looked familiar. And I realized who it was, and I stood there and watched him for a second. So Zach like, all right, like, what exactly did you see? Just tell me, be honest. He like, well, bro, they was um. They were sitting there talking, but they was close. They were sitting real, real close. I'm like, he was sitting across from her. How close and intimate could that be? And he was sitting, uh, you saw him sitting across from her. And then he was. He went on to say, and then, you know, he got on a knee. I don't know what was said, of course, but he said something to her. He was saying something. And then he got up, and then they hugged, and I, that's when I took this picture. But you, you sure you're going to be good? You you don't need me to stay here with you? And he like, she right upstairs, like, I'm going I'm to handle it. Thanks. Like, thanks. I'm like, oh, fuck. So the episode goes off. Then the next episode starts. Zach. Is um going upstairs to talk to Fatima. He hug well. He hugs Tony. Tony actually leaves. He goes upstairs. The intro the intro goes off, and when the show come back on, we get a flash of the veil getting out of the shower, and he is butt ass naked, and that body looks. Whew. The gym does him. Uh, the gym does him good. Kadeem, you have a beautiful, beautiful husband. Physically. I know nobody is perfect, but you do have a beautiful husband. And I do love y'all con y'all content that y'all put out with the kids and everything I do. But I can admit, the Val is a beautiful man. So, um, we get the full. We don't get a front, we get the back. And then he put the towel on him. And his clothes are in the bathroom. And Fatima is luxuriating in the tub with her head back. Um, She like, you gonna go? He said, yeah, I'm gonna go to the um thing with them. So he was like, well, how was your day? What is it that you wanted to talk to me about? What was it? And she was like, it was, he said, what is it, Belinda? She like, yeah, it's a little Belinda and some other things. So she being real vague and not just coming out and telling him. And I'm thinking, why are you not telling him? So he was like, so you just stayed at work all day? That's all you did? You didn't go anywhere else? She lying. Yeah. I stayed at work. It was all right. All right, so I didn't really go anywhere at the work. I just went to the coffee shop, she admits. Because she has no idea that the homeboy didn't see her. So he like, was you at the coffee shop by yourself? She like, yeah, like, what, like, why are you questioning me? What's all this? Like, what's, and then she says, you know, 
I'm still reeling from the whole Belinda stuff. There's some other things going on. And I just, not today, not right now, Zach. But, of course, he emotional because you're not coming out and telling me. So, he lays into her like, listen, who was you in the coffee shop with? Since when you can't talk to me and tell me? So, he real hurt about that. He think it's more than what it was. And, um... He gets upset or whatever, and he leaves. He go. He got this nice sweater on, his Tims, real New Yorkish, with the jeans and the Tims. He goes to the party. The guys are already at the party. They're at the party with their shirts off, with their swim trunks on, walking around. It's some supposed to be like a sports person, athlete. They had a party, and this is the party that they had. So, Zach's still feeling bad. Zach leaves. Fatima calls Angela. Like, girl, I just wasn't ready to tell him. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around the fact that Tony is dying of cancer. I mean, Ian is dying of cancer. And Angela's like, well, why didn't you tell him exactly what was... Like, why? Why you ain't tell him? She like, I, I just wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to go into the whole thing. And I know how Zach can get upset and go off deep end. So, she asked Angela to come over. So, Angela was sitting there with Bryce. She like, you know, I'm going to go see about Fatima. You should call Zach and see where he is, what's going on or whatever. He like, all right, I love you, babe. She like, I love you. And I just want to take this moment to say, these two actors have no chemistry. Zero chemistry at all. They not selling this relationship. They just not. But anyway, so she goes or she leaves to head over to um to the house to be with Fatima. We get back to the party. Um, Bryce calls Zach. At this point, Zach still coherent and he good. And he t and Bryce trying to tell him like, um, I'm gonna come get you or whatever. Like you don't need to be at that party. I don't know what's going on. So. Or whatever, and um, they hang up. The guys are still Nate, still doing the most at the party, or whatever. Something is said. Zach turns and he like, you know what? Let me get out of here. I don't need to be at this party. So he he heads out. He gonna leave. As he's heading out, he runs into Deja. He like, what you doing at this party? I thought you do nails. She was like, yeah, but I'm coming to work the party, too. He said, what, you a caterer or something? She had this really pl pretty blue fur on. And she opened her jacket. And she was like, yeah, I do nails during the day, but and I'm the best in the city. But no, I dance at night. He like, oh, wow, basically taking her back or whatever. And she was like, but please, like, don't worry. I'm going to always have your rent. My Deja daddies, that's what she calls her supporters. So it's given she got like a OnlyFans and all that kind of stuff kind of following. She like my Deja daddy's gonna make sure I get the money. I know what I know how to do what I do and make sure I have the money to pay you your rent. Or whatever. He said, That's good, just make sure it's in cash. And she was like, I hope you don't judge me. He like, No, how can I judge you? Like everybody got a pass. So she like, All right, cool. She said, well, you want to come in and see me do my dance? She was like, I only do, I don't dance at the, um, she calls basically the bars and the clubs low class. She said, she only do, she classy based, as uh, Funky Dineva would say. She was like, I only do private parties because they classier. So he like, oh, okay. She said, so you going to come see me dance? You can judge me dance? He was like, no, I'm going to go ahead and go. She like, yeah, you sure you don't want to come see me dance? Just come see what I do or whatever. So she she said, you're going to watch me walk, right? You're going to watch me walk away. So she walks off, and he like, damn. He said, all right, I'm going to come in. I'm going to see. I said, oh, shit. But he goes in to see, and that's when we see Fatima and Angela at the house talking. And, um... Talking about the whole thing. She telling her about Ian and his mom and all that. Like how he wanted. And Angela is like, girl, wow. Like, um, 
that's that's effed up. Ooh, that's a lot to take in. And you, I remember you and his mom being super close. His mom didn't even like the woman that he married. She couldn't stand it. She didn't even go to their wedding or whatever. And Angela's like, but do you, are you sure you want to call his mother? Like, you know how close they was. I mean, you know how close y'all two were and stuff like that. And Fatima's still thinking on it. She's like, I don't know. Then she get a fucking knock at the door, like banging at the door. I'm like, who at the door? She opened it. The person like, yeah. Is that kid? She like, no. Who who are you? It's the brother. He said, I'm his brother, Jeremiah. She was like, oh, he mentioned you before. Or whatever. She like, but he ain't here. So we find out that he don't even have Zach's phone number. He said, well, let him know my mother want to talk to him. And Fatima like, all right. So then he starts asking, can he come in? And can he have the number? She like, no, he not here. I don't feel comfortable letting you in and he ain't here. I don't know where he is. And if you don't already have his number, I'm not going to give you his number either. So he like, all right, well, just let him know I can't pass and call me. So he leaves. She turns back and Angela's like, that was weird as fuck. She like, yeah, because why doesn't he have Zach's phone number? Number one. And number two, Zach told me a little bit about his mom and his upbringing. So I know it's about to be some bullshit. It's real dysfunctional over there, basically, is what she tell uh, Angela. So we go back to the party. At this point, Zach is sitting there shirtless with Jazzy sitting on, I mean, yeah, that's our Instagram, social media handle is Jazzy something. But he shirtless with uh, Deja sitting on top of him. And I forgot to mention that there was a scene where she was um, in there dancing. The person who was hosting the party, he introduced the dancers and was like, we flew in some people and all that kind of stuff to dance for y'all. And so she won the pole. And the whole time she dancing, as they said, and bring it on, she's eye fucking Zach as she's dancing. And the guys, Nate and Tony, pay attention to that. They called on to that. Like, yo, that's Shorty from, they're going to say, that's Shorty from a few weeks ago. I, um, Tony said, I said, no, you mean that's Shorty from earlier? Because that was just earlier today when he met her and was going to give her the apartment. And they all went to his house and was all inside in the pool. I mean, in the jacuzzi and everything. That's This is all the same day, sir. So you messed up with your, uh, with your script um, at that point. It wasn't a few weeks. It was just a few hours ago. But anyway, I digress. Um, she, I asked him, she's sitting on his lap at this point, and, um, he is clearly very drunk, and then we see Bryce walk in, thankfully, and they like, oh, here comes the dad to save the day, especially, that's not really what Tony is saying, that's what Nate is saying, because, you know, Nate is Mr. Do Too Much, so Bryce is like, come on, Zach, let's go. And um, Zach like, no, I'm having a good time. And um, that's when uh, Deja looks up at Bryce and was like, thank you. Can you take him home? And he was like, I th and Zach tells her, I thought you was taking me home. And I'm like, oh, Lord. And um, that's when she stands up and helps lift him up, get him up. Bryce like, where's your shirt? She, he don't know where his shirt at. But Bryce leads him out so that they can leave the fucking party. And Deja is like, thanks, thanks for coming to get him. He need to go home. He's like, he tore up. And she didn't want him to, you know, to F up and make a mistake or whatever. She seemed real cool. Like, when she realized that he got somebody and stuff, and, like, that little, I feel like that little bit of flirting that they was doing was harmless and stuff like that, especially now that she renting from him and all oh, like, that. It's not going to be what people wanted it to be or whatever. Um, or what it seemed to be at first with her flirting with him happy. But anyway, Bryce leaves him out of the party. And we go back to the house with Fatima. And Angela still sitting there talking about how weird it was with the brother. And then Fatima phone buzzed and she said, mm, and she like declines whatever it was. Put her phone down. And then immediately, um, she like, that was just Belinda. She keep hitting me out. Girl, I don't got time for her. F her. And then, um, Angela phones, her phone chimes, and she looks, she said, oh, yeah, she calling me, too. So, 
Fatima was like, what's she telling you? Like, what's she saying? Like, open the phone. And she like, no. She like, tell me what the message say. What is it? And Angela not trying to do it because she not trying to cause no more mess, no more drama. Like, Fatima then ran into her ex. He didn't told her that um, he's dying. You already didn't hand it out with Belinda. What was the, the day before or so? When you caught her trying to come on his hack or whatever. Tell me some she helping you. You know, so it was just all all too much. But she was like, come on, Angela, open the phone. So she got Angela to do her face recognition thing. And she opened up the message that Belinda sent. And, of course, Belinda would be at the party, too. And she sent Angela a photo of Zach with Deja sitting on his lap. And Zach laying back, like, you know, and Deja just sitting on his lap. Um, It's all going to be, as we see, it's all a big misunderstanding. I feel like Fatima should have been forthcoming and at least say, I did meet up with my ex today and he told me he died. And he really basically um, wanted to meet up to make amends for all the stuff that he did to hurt me. That's all it was. She should have just come out and tell him that. But because she did it, that got Zach in a certain headspace. And now she sees this picture and that's putting her in a certain headspace, you know. And, um, and at this point, she still don't know that Zach saw the picture of her. Uh, that Tony showed him or whatever. And Angela is like, well, he do basically talk about Zach. Like, well, he do have a rep. Um, he do have a rep team. He got a reputation for being a whore, being a player. So you really think he changed all the way? And it's like, mm. and then the episode goes off. And I'll be back at y'all with episodes. 78 at some point. Thanks for watching. Thanks for clicking the video. If you made it to this point and you actually watched my whole video, I really appreciate the views. I hope y'all start to view and give me some likes on some of my other stuff that I review and all that kind of stuff like that on my other content. Um, You can get in the comments and talk about what you think is going to happen with this show. Please don't go past giving details about the next um two episodes that I haven't seen yet. I haven't watched seven and eight, although they are there to watch. So um I see you guys in the next one. I appreciate the views. Appreciate the likes. Hit the subscribe button. And I see y'all in the next one. Maybe these braids will still be here or maybe they'll be out. I took the back row out. That's why I've been wearing this headband and I took one braid out at the top. I gotta get them out. They've been in um almost three months at this point, and they need to come out. I just don't know what I'm gonna do with my hair at the at the woods, but um, that was a whole lot, wasn't it? I see y'all. Thanks for watching again. I appreciate y'all.